on a story about a woman in the Bible. Um, she currently is also, not also, but she's working on getting her demon here at Lipscomb. Um, and even though I'm a few hundred miles away, I did not get to hear her message this morning. Um, the fact that we're both getting to go to school at Lipscomb and preach today is really exciting for me and such an honor. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and speak. Um, it really means the world to me. Um, I'm going to read the passage one more time just so you can hear it. Um, this is Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The first few times I read this passage, I found myself immediately jumping into the classic evangelical spiel about the importance of prayer and perfecting our individual connection with God. Prayer is an important part of faith, but I did not want to preach another sermon on the importance of prayer. To be very honest with you, prayer does not come naturally to me. Um, something about vulnerability and laying my fears and joys out on a table and letting them sit there and fester and take up space is not something that I particularly enjoy. So already, at a first glance, I was uncomfortable with this passage, and I don't think it's an accident that Jesus uses parables so often in his ministry for that very reason. To make the disciples, the believers, and the skeptics in the crowds uncomfortable as they try to identify their role in the stories. This tiny parable, tucked between two pretty major parables in Luke, is no different. Um, before chapter 18, Jesus just casually introduces the idea that the kingdom of God is already deeply interwoven into the structures of our world. And immediately after this passage, Jesus not only explicitly calls out the hypocrisy of evangelical pride, but also scandalously states that it is children who have a better grasp on the kingdom of God than adults. And so, as I was writing this, I was asking myself, what more could eight verses in between two major points in Jesus' ministry possibly have to teach me about the kingdom and the ways I interact with it? Enter now the persistent widow. <laughs> um, my first instinct was to paint her as meek. I began to imagine her as a young woman with tiny, delicate hands, red eyes from perpetual weeping, sickly features. She is the quintessential victim in biblical narratives. I find myself seeing the persistent widow as walked over, timid, a woman with no status in the context of a patriarchal society, because this version of the widow is the natural one for me to stomach. As Christians, we love a good story about the helpless being helped. This image of the widow fits that story perfectly. In turn, I imagine the judge as a large, looming man, sharp features, and a smile that doesn't feel quite right, that betrays a lifetime of pride and an unhealthy reverence for knowing, for correctness. And I really like these two characters. They are, in every way, a sharp contrast from each other. Their roles in the story are really clear, and I know that the widow, the small, meek woman will somehow overcome the clear disadvantages that she has to this privileged, educated man. This will be, as it should be, another story of the helpless being helped, a parable that is tied up in a nice little bow at the end, as it should be, right? But there is not enough room in this parable for the kind of hero that I want. Instead, 
It is the woman, the pleading woman, wood, widow, who pesters the cynical judge. It is that woman who advocates for herself, who steps outside all of the stereotypes that I have put her under and demands justice. This seizing of the narrative is really uncomfortable for me because suddenly this widow is no longer the stereotypical, soft-spoken, meek lady I could see so clearly. Instead, she assumes a tangible role in the political and spiritual ecosystem inside this story. She demands space and to be heard. And this is where I think the story has a lot to teach me. Because this is not a story about a woman throwing herself at the feet of the judge and begging him to save her. This is a story of a marginalized and fed up woman taking her story into her own hands and demanding tangible justice. Yes. She is not at all like the quiet widow I want so badly for her to be. In the midst of having to suffer the humiliation and shame that was tied to being a widow at that time, she still frequently challenged the judge in light of her circumstances. And there is no meekness there. There's nothing soft-spoken about that. I think that the longer that I sat with this passage, the more I began to realize that the point of this parable is, yes, about prayer and faith, but also is about the way that we as a body are called to be stewards and advocate shamelessly mm -hmm. for the oppressed and the marginalized. I avoided any and all thinking about the judge in this story. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I placed him as the clear bad guy and left it at that. But of course, I can't seem to escape feeling totally called out by this passage. And just like the widow, I think that the judge demanded that I also make some space for him. If the widow in the story is the advocate, I think that, that makes the judge the systems that are complicit in marginalization. Mm. For me, this looks a little something like ICE, those who support Trump, those who are anti-LGBTQ, and a slew of other things that I deem to be oppressive. And I thought that I was writing the judge off because it was clear that he was wrong, but I think that not only is this passage calling me to be an unapologetic advocate like the widow, but this passage is also calling me to check myself, to ask myself what systems I give into. It is far easier for me to posture myself after the widow because I think that feels much more redemptive, but I don't think I can ignore the underlying message here. I am guilty of taking part in the judgment of the people that this parable is advocating for, just as much as I would like. Right before this, Jesus talks about the kingdom being present on earth, and I don't think that this story follows that one on accident. In fact, I think that what Luke is trying to highlight Jesus saying is that part of being a part of the kingdom on earth is not being afraid to get down deep into the mud. And that, as Christians, is what we are called to do. Amen.